I got a mirror here, and I'm going to talk about a mirror reflection, mirror reflection, which is something that the ladies will know more about than us gents. Because um, a kind of number of time is spent on this thing called a mirror, right? <laughs> Putting on your makeup and making sure you look good. And some people take photos with the mirror, which I don't understand. They take a photo of themselves taking a photo in the mirror. I just, you know, one of those, you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, some of them just do it so that you can see the Apple logo on their phone. But anyway, I'm not saying that. Um, amen. Any Apple people in the building? <laughs> shine, shine, shine. Don't let the jealous people get you down. They, they, God is going to bless them with finances to buy one pretty soon. Amen. Any Samsung people in the building? Okay, Huawei, you can also raise your hands. Okay. This is a lot about affordability. Anyway, um, let's preach. Uh, let's go into the word. Power of the microphone. Um, let's go to the word in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse number 1. Chapter number 11, verse number 1. Are you ready for a great word? Amen. Are you expecting God to speak to your life? Amen. I hope you didn't just walk up to church just to see what this guy has to say, but you really believe in God that he's going to say something to you this evening. Amen? Amen. So before we get into it, can I just pray real quick? Um, Abba, God, we thank you so much for your word. We pray that God that you can speak into our lives. Holy Spirit, we believe in you and we believe in your word and we believe that it's sharper than any two-edged sword. We believe, Lord God, that today will be expedient to make the changes that are necessary in our lives to mold us into the perfect image of Jesus Christ. Speak to every person in this place tonight to the glory of your name. Hallelujah and amen. Alrighty then. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. Sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 1. Mirror reflection. Tell somebody next to you, mirror reflection. Tell the other one that one didn't hear you say, mirror reflection. Now, because they don't care, just ignore them and say it real loud in front of me. Say, mirror reflection. Mirror reflection. Cool, I want you to get that. I want you to write that down. Every day of your life, I want you to remember those two words, mirror reflection. One of the most important things that you're going to get today is that you are a perfect, you are a perfect image of God. You are who He is. Now, Paul has this audacity that most people don't have. He's got this boldness in him that most people never had. He's, he's one of those... I don't know, those super, super role models that everybody kind of looks, looks up to. Um, and definitely for me, Paul is my favorite, you know, he's my favorite. I just, I just love the guy, I just love his authenticity and his, his realness, his, his bluntness, his, you know, candidness, everything. He's just, Paul is a poor. He ain't trying to be up with anybody else but Jesus. And because of his life and his looking unto Jesus, he has this audacity to look to people in the church of Corinthians. And he says to them, imitate me. I don't know who here has the boldness to say that. Imitate me just as I imitate Christ. I don't think anyone has the courage to say that. Say, imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Now, maybe for us to appreciate this, we understand, we understand what the word imitate means. It means, imitation means copying the words, facial expressions of, an, of another person. Um, which means, if, if Jesus is too far from you, Paul says, look at me. I will be the perfect replica of what is too far from you. I will bring Jesus close to you. If you, if you cannot understand this love business, just look at my love. If you cannot understand how to be kind, just look at me. If you don't understand how to be forgiven, just look at me. So Paul has the address to tell people, listen, if, if, if you feel like this God thing is far fetched, just look at me. Imitate just as I am a take back. So basically, Paul is saying that I am a common copy of who Jesus is. I am exactly as he is. So if you want Jesus, you will not be You can even mistake Jesus for me. The, the life that I now live, I live in the hope of the Son of God, he says. This is why I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live the Lord, but Christ lives in me. So in him, you can see that he has been engulfed by the person of so he says, now, 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 all ye Corinthians that are struggling with this carnality and things of the world, just look at me. Just 
just look at me, just look at me, and see Jesus. I, I don't know if there's a person in this building tonight that can say, brother, you can look at me. I don't know if there's a lady in, in this building, sister, you can look at me. If, if you need Jesus, look at me. I am a perfect reflection of my man. I'm a perfect example of who he is. In my life, you will find his love. I am totally everything that he is. Imitate me just as I am imitating Christ. Which means there's a certain, there's certain things, there's certain things that I'm doing about my life which resemble somebody I'm aspiring to be. There's certain facets of my life that you can totally see and say, this is not even you. You are doing like somebody else. Maybe let me let me just make an example real quick. Peter, please come to the front. Um, um, I, I want you to do me a favor, just jump right here real quick, and uh, we're going to play a game right now, you know, someone says do this, someone says do that, cool. When I say do this, you do what I do, when I say do that, you don't do what I do. So someone says do this, someone says do this, someone says do this, someone says do this, someone says do this. He comes there on one leg, what, he, what did he have? Um, someone says do this, someone says do that, someone says do this. You didn't, someone was supposed to do that, you're supposed to just do this. Someone says do this, do this. Do this. Now, what is he doing? He's imitating what I'm doing. Which means, don't look at me, look at him. You look at me. Someone says, do this. Do you know what I just did? How? But you didn't see me do it. But because there's somebody, did you just, did you, did you just? of understanding, but there is someone that you can look to that sees better than you do. And so even though you cannot see God, you can just look at their life and you will see how God is behaving. That was the secret of the ministry of Jesus. Because listen, whenever they wanted to persecute Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus would tell them, I only do that which I You got it. You got it. I only do that. Which means Jesus was seeing things they were not seeing. They were condemning him, but they didn't understand that he was only just do this, do this, do this. And they're like, what are you doing? I am imitating something that is far beyond what you can see. So, so Paul is saying the exact same thing. He says, imitate me. It's not because he's boastful. It's because he understands the realm of seeing that he can see it. Look at 
Jesus. They say, look at us. Look at us. Then he says, in Jesus' name, be made. Why? They can see that God is already performing the healing. But because the man couldn't see it, they just look at us because we can see it. By his stripes, we are healed. But do I have people with insight tonight?
had no right, it had no power in the minute it hit the cross. So it is by choice for you to struggle with what you're struggling with. Wake up call. Wake up call. The problem is we do not know how to imitate. And little of us don't even know who to imitate. So let me help somebody and tell you how to imitate. So Paul says, don't only copy me, but also copy how I copy Jesus. The reason is he doesn't want you to be stuck with him. He wants you to catch the pattern. Understand you're still a baby in Christ. I will help you, but I don't want you to stay there. I want you to be able to do this thing yourself. I want you to be able to see what I see in God. I want you to be able to see the season that it changes. I want you to be able to see what God is doing in the spirit. So he says, don't only copy me, but copy how I do it. Now let me show you how he does it. Can, can I tell you how he copies? Yes, yes. Anybody want to learn how to copy? Yes. Let's go into it. Now, how did Paul Galatians chapter number 2 verse 2 and I like this. For I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I that live but Christ that lives in me and that life which I now live in the flesh I live in faith. The faith which is in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. But this highlighted part again. But Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live in what? In faith in whom? In Christ, right? The faith which is in the Son of God, who loved me. Which means, Paul is saying, I live in the faith that I am no longer me. Listen to this. That is no longer I that live. No, 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 go back. I just want Christ no I that lives, but Christ is living. And that life. What is that life? What is that life? And that life which I now live, I live in faith of the Son of God. Which means he's talking about a new life. That's what we call to be born again. So he's talking about a new life, which means Paul really believes that it is not the same person. Before Damascus, he's really convicted that he's a different person. He really believes that his old habits have died. He really believes that he's a new creature in Jesus Christ. He really believes that he's more than a conqueror, and he really believes that he's loved by God. So Paul is telling us that if you are going to copy, copy out of my. Identity. Now we're going to get into a thing. We're a reflection. Time is almost up. Copy out of identity. Basically, what, what, what that means is believing against your emotions. Believing against what you can see in the flesh. Believing against how people are treating you. Believing of how life is treating you. Believing of how the, the body is behaving.
see some of you guys come, right? Uh, now he says, he says, but we all with unveiled faces beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Beholding as in a mirror. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know, guys. Okay, you know, I'm getting excited. I get it. Because if the Lord is there, I see myself there. But it says, I'm beholding as in a mirror the glory of God. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Uh, the glory of the Lord are transformed into the same image. And conform into the same vision image from glory to glory, even as from the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, cool. Which means, as I look, I'm being transformed to the same image that I see. Yeah. Help me understand that. Just, just help me understand that. You are changing to what you see. I mean, this is just English. Man. It's just like that. It's not even, it's not even a revelation. It's just. In your Bible as well. Look at what he says in Genesis. Keep it there. Uh, Genesis 1 verse 23 says, Anyone who listens to the word, my God, are there any lovers of the word today?
Because the problem that you saw just need a mirror. All the problems you have just need a mirror. Amen. Because as you look at yourself in your mirror, you feel like I'm not like that. And they said this about me, but I don't have that. Because the mirror is saying something different. If you don't look into the mirror, you will believe everything that people say about you because you don't look at yourself. But if you spend enough time looking at yourself, you will have confidence. Come on now, yes. That I'm more than a confidence. Amen, amen, I don't amen. They may say I'm a failure, but I'm not a failure. Yes, amen. Of who I am in God's words, I know I am more than what I seem to be. So tonight, I want to invite people to come to the altar and say, Lord Jesus, just help me. Help me to see who I really am. Because some of your troubles and your pains are self inflicted because of ignorance. God wants to give you a knowledge, a supernatural knowledge of who you are. So that when you read the Bible, you have confidence into what you see. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are just as he is. And I couldn't say some of the stuff, but really, really when you go deep into this word, you realize that actually.